Hey guys, Andy Brady again here. Uh, today I'm going to record a little bit of the progress of upgrading my printing space. I previously uploaded a video showing where I was using a laundry room as my printing space, um, but it's time to expand. It's time to stop spreading out throughout the home with all my 3D printing stuff. So instead, we're coming down here to my woodworking shop uh, slash garage, and I'm going to turn this into a space. Uh, let me show you what we're working with. All right, so it's a woodworking shop, and the biggest problem that we have in a woodworking shop is going to be dust. Uh, also, it is um, a garage, so it is cold, it is hot, it does not maintain a temperature. So even though my new Bamboo uh, X1 has its own enclosure, I want to build a full enclosure from this side of the table uh, down to about here. Um, and then I want the end spot to be set up for 3D scanning. So what I need to do is I need to build something that will encompass all of this with glass doors on it. I want to leave enough room for a fourth printer uh, or to be able to store filament inside of the heated chamber. I have a small heater that I'll be putting in there and setting the temperature and I'll be making a roof over top of it with wood and insulated with both foam insulation and metal building insulation that I happen to have. The idea here is to be able to keep the temperature in this room um, to a temperature where I can still use my Ender or I can still use my Prusa to print uh, PLA, for example, without it peeling off like crazy because this garage can get down to, let's say, 60 degrees easily in the winter. Um, so if I've got this small space, throw the space heater in there. And the biggest part is it's also going to keep the dust from my, you know, my table saw, from my band saw, uh, anytime that I'm cutting wood down here, tons of dust. I don't want it getting in these motors, getting in these gears. Uh, but this is the new space for my 3D printing. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a little bit as I go, and then hopefully I'll have the end product on this video. First roadblock while planning this is the bamboo AMS has to open from the top. So if I make the shelf a line right along the top, it would not give me room to lift it up and it also would not give me room to pull it out and change filament um, without disconnecting the whole thing. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to make the shelf around 26 inches or so um, and I'm going to change where the filament roll goes on the ender uh, as well as if I need to I'll mount a permanent filament roll probably to the shelf for uh, the Prusa as well and then I'm going to move the AMS out of the enclosure and put it actually on top of the shelf where I'll store many other things for the 3D printing. So I'm going to be looking at a space about 26 inches tall um, and 30 inches or 76 centimeters for the metric people out there and uh, that's what I'm going to go with. Three seconds have passed since the last part of the video but 20 minutes has passed of working on this project trying to decide. I actually decided I'm going to make it the full 30 inches on the top shelf uh, but I'm actually only going to raise it up 24 inches because the insulation that I've got is four feet wide, which means I can cut it exactly in half, and I can actually insulate against the concrete wall. That concrete wall is actually underground throughout most of the outside of this garage, um, so it stays cold. So if I'm running the heater, I'm actually going to have to fight against the, the thermal temperature of all that concrete, and I really don't want to have to fight that mass. Uh, so I'm going to cut this plywood at 30 inches, and I'm going to cut that at 24, and we'll see where we go from there. Occasionally in these videos, I'll tell you guys about the tools that I'm specifically using, and sometimes I'll even put the link to them on Amazon. I do, of course, receive a commission if you purchase it on Amazon, but I just want to let you guys know um, I'm not going to recommend anything to anybody that's not something that I truly believe in, truly love. Uh, this Craig Rip Tool, I think that's how you say Craig, um, is amazing. I'll be able to sit it at 18 inches, um, which is exactly what I need to sit it at to leave 30 inches on this plywood, and I'll be able to rip it the full length, and it will end up coming out amazing. Um, and for all the people not in the United States who are wondering why I'm doing inches and why haven't we converted yet, you notice these tools don't even have millimeters and centimeters on them. So you know it's it's kind of it's kind of hard for us to switch over to millimeters and centimeters when every single tool that we buy here in the states does not have millimeters and centimeters on it. So even though I've become accustomed to both and I use both in my professional life, um, yeah, in this situation, going with inches.
All right, everybody, I got the uh, frame built in, very rudimentary, um, using just scraps of wood and things I had around the house. No reason to buy extra stuff when you already had stuff. Um, I've come to a standstill. I can't do any more until this print finishes, and it has nine hours and 52 minutes left on it. Um, but I've already got my plexiglass cut for the doors, and I've already got my top made. Uh, I got a hole here for the um, filament to go down from the AMS straight down to the bamboo, which the AMS will sit on top. I've also got these holes cut, and I've got a mounting filament spool holders and upside down Rubbermaid Tupperware that I already had. Um, that way the heat from the heater can come up, can keep the filament dry, feed right down to it, and then I won't have to have the filament inside the box. Uh, once this print stops tomorrow, I'll be able to slide, slap this right on top, screw it all together, put the doors on it, and then test everything out and see how it works. Um, see you tomorrow. All right, I got the lid finally put on this uh, rather ugly contraption made out of leftover wood and materials from around the house. About to start cutting the styrofoam. Uh, this is a metal backed foiled uh, styrofoam, so it'll have some fire resiliency to it as well. We'll see what that looks like after I put it on. All right, we are almost done. Just some deliberations that I'm going through right now. Uh, as you can see, I can put the spool on top. There's a hole cut through, so the heater that'll be inside and the natural heat just from running the printers will keep the spools warm in there. I plan to build a uh, studio basically right here for my 3D scanning stuff. Um, and I'm probably gonna convert these drawers down here instead of carrying electrical and plumbing stuff. Probably gonna just fill this with filament spools. Um, haven't really decided what I'm going to do with the filament yet. I ended up making the box just a little bit shorter than I had originally intended. Um, I wanted to make it long enough to fit a fourth printer, um, but I decided against that. Um, so the last thing I'm really trying to figure out, and when the video cuts back on, hopefully by then I'll have a solution. I've got these two plexiglass doors that I've bought. I've already cut them, and I've got this piano hinge. I was going to line the piano hinge up, and I was going to have big swing away doors. But then I started realizing that as I'm working with stuff in my workshop, when the table saw's back here, um, you know, if the shop vac, whatever, whenever I open this door up, it's going to be sticking way out here. Um, so I'm kind of deliberating back and forth between putting a sliding track where I could slide them back and forth, similar to how these drawers work here uh, on these cabinets. Or um, I could just attach some strip magnets to it and have them be plates up here. You grab a handle and just pull the whole thing off set it down on the ground right in front of it, and then when you're ready to put it back up, just put it right back up. That would be the least obtrusive way of doing it, the easiest way to get it completely out of the way, but I could also get very annoyed with having uh, plastic constantly being pulled off and set below and then put back up. Uh, but we are almost ready for everything to start printing through here. Um, I actually ended up with enough clearance uh, for the Prusa to keep its spools, um, but I still think I'm probably gonna end up putting it up here. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that on the final product as well. Uh, also, I use these lights, they're called Barina lights. I think that's how they're said. Uh, I get them off of Amazon, they're very affordable. Uh, they're fantastic. I've put them through my entire shop um, and uh, they're extremely bright and I've ordered a four foot one that I plan to mount on the underside here, shining that way. Um, I made sure to put the foil facing inward. Two reasons, one, it is fire resistant uh, and number two, it's going to reflect that light. So when that light goes up right here, hopefully it will reflect off of all the surfaces and kind of illuminate the entire area. Um, one other piece of information about the, the X1 Carbon is in the back of the X1 Carbon, it's loud. In the back of the X1 Carbon there is actually a chute. And when it changes filament colors, it just dumps that filament straight out of the back. So I've got the X1 carbon pulled forward a little bit more. I've got a cardboard box back there for now that's just going to catch everything that falls out of it. Uh, probably going to have to empty that once every couple months or so, maybe more often. So that is one little tie-in. Um, the AMS is pulled about as tight as I can get it without extending the tube, uh, which I may end up doing as well so I can pull it a little bit further, but I can still reach this just fine. That's not an issue. So um, when I cut back on, hopefully we'll have some... Uh, some doors up of some sort. We will have this space heater in there, uh, which has safety settings all over it. And I'm gonna have some temperature sensors and some humidity sensors, commercial grade, uh, that I'll be able to use just to kind of see what we're getting in there. Hey everybody, should be the last part of the video. Uh, as I move out of the laundry room, out of this 
printing space that was just a, an eyesore and I move into the garage, which at one time was nice and clean, but has now become an absolute unbearable mess of all the junk that I've gotten out of here. There is styrofoam everywhere, plywood thrown everywhere. Um, I'm ready to be done with this project so I can get this place clean again, but let me turn it around and show you guys before I put the last final touches on it, what we got so far. All right, so decided to go with a track with some plexiglass. I used two pieces of trim that are used for the ends of uh, siding from Lowe's. Um, just traveled around Lowe's for a little bit. I decided against the hinges, as you can see. Um, and I don't know if this is a final product. I actually only hot glued these pieces of trims in place right now, um, just because, I mean, it's, it's ugly. It's, it's an ugly hot glue job. Uh, but I really wanted to make sure this is what I liked first. My thought process was I'd be able to push it well beyond the edge on both sides, be able to access the middle, have plenty of room. I'm also not gonna put the heater in there for now because I believe that uh, the printers will put off enough heat of their own that this box will probably stay hot. Uh, but I've got uh, industrial grade temperature sensors and humidity gauges that we'll be using to kind of monitor everything. Uh, again, just to note, you know, that hole I drilled, the AMS feeds down through there. I decided to take these uh, Rubbermaid boxes that I was using to keep my filament dry-ish, keep it dry, um, and put some stands on there that are going to feed underneath, straight down to the printer. There will be my Prusa Mark III uh, Plus right back in here, but I wanted to give myself some room. I have Wise cameras. Uh, the Bamboo has a camera built in itself, so I have a Wise camera. One to look at the Ender, and one to look at the... Prusa. Now, I'm using Belkin smart plugs for the two printers that I do not have hooked up smart. So if I have a long print going on, I can remote view. I'll be able to see if there's an issue going on and I'll be able to cut the power directly to that printer, fix whatever's going on, and then resume print hopefully when it's done. Um, one final note, uh, the top is wood. Sides are uh, styrofoam, but they are foil face. They are made to be fire resistant. But I'm going to be purchasing some of the um, instant fire um, extinguishers. I don't know if you guys have seen those things. They basically have a fuse on them or they have a temperature gauge on them that when a certain temperature is hit, it basically explodes the powder that puts out a fire and it saves electronics. So I think they're about $35 a piece. Might have to double check that. Um, but I plan to mount probably one above each one of these printers. So if I have this thing going for a long time, if I go out of town, if I leave, uh, whatever it might be, I can feel confident that even if the plastic erupted into flames that there will be three different automatic fire extinguishers in there. Um, so that's my plan as of now. And uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm done. I'm sure it will face many changes. I'm sure I will decide that there's some things I like, some things I don't like. And I'm sure that this will not be uh, the, the final product. This will be Mark 1. Um, and then we'll, we'll expand on it as the time comes. But uh, thank you guys for watching the journey and seeing how I was making all this. And um, I doubt anyone's going to have the same leftover wood, leftover everything like I have. Um, but if it gives you guys an idea of something that you could create to kind of give yourself a more stable environment. I hear a lot of times, especially on the internet, where people are just posting constantly that it's too cold where I am. It's too humid where I am. My temperature is not consistent enough. I can only print so many times out of the year. Um, but they also don't want to make a whole bunch of individual boxes. Um, so my thought was just go above and beyond. So uh, thank you again. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe if you'd like to see any future videos and um, have a good day.